Good afternoon, everybody. I hope all of you are well and welcome to another session at the M365 Philly virtual event. Up next, we have upgrading SharePoint 2010 workflows with Jerry. Jerry, are you ready? Yes, I am. Fantastic. Well, I'll let you uh, just take it away. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jerry Yasser, and today we are going to talk about the the biggest news I think for the for the month of July is the other than 2020 uh, is the uh, is the deprecation or retirement or killing or removal or whatever you call it of the SharePoint 2010 workflows. Um, so the in this session we will talk about the whole picture about the workflows, but I've kind of crossed the 2010 in there so that we we, we show that the, the main focus is to go away from the the classic SharePoint workflows and go more towards uh, the Microsoft Power Automate. So let's jump into it. So for a little bit about me, I am um, again um, Microsoft MVP for around 11 years, uh, and I work at DXC Technology uh, as an Office 365 architect. Um, at DXC, I'm part of uh, a team uh, that provides specialized services um, around Office 365, SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, uh, Power Apps, and Power Automate. So I'm part. I'm basically supporting customers in day-to-day -day, uh, activities, which which support around supporting these applications. Uh, we we provide various services that include, you know, custom application development that includes SPFX, and we saw. Amazing demo in the last session where we talked about the, the the modern experience. So we are working very closely with the users on transforming their sites, which are built on classic uh, development in, uh, using content editor web parts to the more content, uh, the modern content editor or the SPFX based based solutions. We provide a lot of services about around migration to SharePoint Online, uh, and that includes uh, not only SharePoint to SharePoint Online, but also the Windows or um, Windows uh, network folders or network shares to OneDrive. We have a very strong uh, services uh, around Microsoft Azure as well. So, um, and the last thing about myself is that I love doing automation and scripting, and again, Power Apps and Power Power uh, uh, Automate is the area where I've been working very closely with the customers. So, this session is not about telling you what this news is all about, but uh, I will share my personal experience when uh, in the last six months of, of the number of uh, Microsoft workflows I have upgraded from the classic platform to the new one, uh, how, I, how I did it, what kind of questions or challenges I received, um, and uh, you know, I'll try to cover them as much as I can. So um, in terms of the, the workflow announcement, uh, the in in early July, Microsoft announced that the 2010 workflows um, will be will be removed or disabled in SharePoint Online. So, if if you want to get a background, that initially the SharePoint 2010 workflows were part of the the SharePoint 2007 to 2010 upgrade, but they were uh, they were named as SharePoint 2010 workflow. Uh, and in SharePoint Online, these workflows were provided by a feature. So by default, if you create a SharePoint site, uh, you don't see these workflows. Uh, these workflows were only enabled when you enable the uh, SharePoint uh, workflows feature. Uh, as soon as you enable it, you see the, the SharePoint uh, out of the box workflows in the list. You see approval, collect feedback, and collect signatures workflow. Um, and, and these workflows are not a very complex type of uh, workflow. These are basic workflow that you can configure um, very, very easily. And they do their job. So the most of these workflows does is either they assign a task and based on the condition that you set up in the task, they um, basically they, they, you know, they run from one step to another. You can run them these tasks as parallel or you can run them as uh, serial. Um, Jerry, can I interrupt? I want to see if you could change it uh, into presentation mode. I think the text is appearing too small. Yeah, is that better? I think it's right. a little bit better. And if maybe you could zoom a little bit. All right. Uh, Perfect. Let's see if I can. Thank I, you so much. All right. No problem. So the um, 
the SharePoint 2010 workflows in terms of the dates, uh, the the uh, the uh, the announcement as of now is that the 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 on the new tenants, Microsoft will will block the SharePoint 2010 workflows on August 1st. Um, you might have read it uh, on the existing tenants. I think that's where the danger is, is that again for some people it's a little bit of a scary thing, and some people it's kind of exciting. Um, especially you know, the folks in the community who develop uh, Power Automate and Power Apps, uh, they will be pretty excited to know that the Microsoft has given us around four months to make sure that all the 2010 workflows that we have used to be converted. So on November 1st, they will be blocked as well. Now on the new tenants, the SharePoint 2013 workflows will be turned off on 1st 1st uh, November 2020. Uh, in terms of their blocking or removal, um, for the existing tenants, uh, that date is not yet uh, finalized. Um, you know, I heard some rumors about 2021 somewhere in February or March, but uh, I, I believe I haven't read any uh, clear statement on that. Um, so the, the work, these workflows uh, and the last thing about them that these are mostly considered as out of the box workflows, uh, but you, you, you shouldn't take a chance. Uh, there are ways that you can actually uh, customize the out of the box workflows as well. So if you have um, ever had access to, if your end users have ever had access to SharePoint Designer, then they can actually customize them. Uh, so the, the customization process, we'll, we'll go through that in a bit, but um, in terms of the, uh, the workflows themselves, uh, as a total, as a cover up, the, the SharePoint 2010 workflow are basically are the SharePoint platform level uh, uh, workflows or they run within the SharePoint uh, system um, and you can develop these for different levels. You can run them on the lists, you can run them on content types, meaning they become, they become reusable. Uh, you can also create workflows for site level uh, and the once you set up these workflows, um, based on the type of workflow you have developed, it, they may or may not have info path forms associated with it. So if your workflow is just running a, a process and just doing some updates and does not have any user interface, then you don't have any info path form behind it other than the association if it's set to start manually. But if you have an association where a, you, when a user come to the page and it has he has to fill a few values at the start, then you definitely have some association of info path with the, your workflows. Um, so these uh, workflows use info path as, as a UI uh, during the workflow process. Um, another thing that you might have noticed that uh, the more uh, SharePoint workflows you use, uh, you will have to think about the workflow task and history lists. Uh, I've been you know, working with customers with 20,000, 30,000 site collections, and almost every site have five or six different workflow history lists, and every one of them is extremely large, uh, 50,000 to uh, you know 300,000 items. And the problem is that we can't even try to remove it uh, because some people, um, some users think that they want to have access to their workflows all the time. So in the past, we have developed uh, applications or uh, I would say JS link type apps where the users can actually go to the list and actually see the history. So we have created um, the CSOM or JSON based apps that basically show a very nice um, dialogues that shows the history around the approval. But there is a problem as well that in SharePoint, once you, if you stay in SharePoint on-prem, then there was always a feature that we can turn off the history uh, removal or workflow instance removal um, and then your workflows will stay there forever but SharePoint Online is a totally different story. Uh, in SharePoint Online the workflow stays for 30 days and then you don't have any idea whether you have run an approval or a feedback or anything like that on your workflows and this is where um, you you have to have some kind of uh, functionality to see whether this item that I'm looking at has been approved or went through the process of approval. So this is the whole idea about SharePoint uh, 2010 workflows. Now I was talking about the um, whether you can you actually find out whether a workflow has been customized. So again, the there are the when if you open your SharePoint site, uh, especially SharePoint online site in SharePoint Designer, you can you can see the workflow tab in there, 
And if you click on the approval workflow, you can actually uh, see, but you cannot make any change to it. You can see it um, as is, but if you want to make any changes, you can actually copy and modify. So if you see, if you see, um, you know, if you make a copy, it'll show it'll show you as a, a SharePoint approval workflow, but it's customized, it's changed. So there are some that you can go in, add some logic. They will look like out of the box approval workflow, but they are definitely um, uh, custom workflows. Um, one of the thing that if you go to a SharePoint site, if you want to quickly see how many workflows are there, the same workflow page can give you that. The, there is a platform column that can show you whether workflow is developed using um, SharePoint 2010 or 2013. So you can easily differentiate, um, but there's no way to group that. If you have very large number of uh, workflows, you can only sort by the column and see the, those values. The 2010 workflows appear on top. Uh, I have seen that they, my, my experience here on this page is that people name the workflows very randomly. So I have seen the sites where I have 20 workflows and three or four of them are exactly the same name with a minor difference of either a character or a dash or maybe V1 or maybe the year 2020 or 2013 or 2014. So it's kind of very hard to actually see which workflow is actively being used and which workflow is a previous version or a duplicate of the same workflow. So that, that's very important that we need to have a way, we should have a way to actually go and figure out how we can find that how many workflows are being used, uh, how many workflows are there, first of all, um, how many workflows can be upgraded to either a 2013 style workflow or a Microsoft Power Automate. So jumping into that, um, this is where we have an application from Microsoft. Our PNP team has developed this application called uh, Modernization Scanner. So Modernization Scanner is actually a, a, a console app or a Windows app uh, that provides us a way to check whether our SharePoint uh, online sites are ready for modernization. The, the primary focus is again, converting your sites from classic to modern, but thanks to them by providing us um, a functionality of classic workflows so that we can actually go and collect all the information about those workflows. As I said in earlier that just like uh, you collect information about workflow, there's also uh, workflows can be connected to uh, info paths. So one is that workflow itself is using info, uh, info path for the form or the dialogues that appear for approval or rejection. But on the other hand, there is a pre-step process where a user might have an info path form that he fills. And as soon as the form is saved to a library, the workflow starts and then those approvals come in. So the info path and classic workflow usage works side by side. Uh, so in that case, uh, I suggest that, you know, if you're running it at once, uh, you can collect both classic workflow usage and info path usage both together so that you can identify any linkages between InfoPath and the SharePoint workflows. Uh, once you, uh, you know, uh, we will actually go to a uh, demo and actually see how it works. So um, let's uh, close it. So if I go back to my desktop here uh, by simply minimizing it for now, uh, I have it here. So one thing that the, the feedback or that I got from some uh, couple of my customers is that, you know, hey, you know, this is an executable, I don't trust it. So again, we have to make sure that we, we tell them this is coming from a, a Microsoft source, we can give the Microsoft article uh, so that they are confirmed that there is nothing malicious about it. And there are certain, there is a setting in there that uh, help us not to expose any user information. So let's run it. So if I double click on it, um, it's basically running in my other screen. So I'll drag it over here and it's giving me this warning about the version. So um, although I'm running 2.13, here is the, um, the screen where you will configure the settings. So you can see that I have the option of authentication. So I have four common options, Azure AD app only or ACS app only. So you can uh, whatever and however comfortable you are in terms of authentication and whatever your level of access is to the farm uh, or to the tenant. So you can actually um, run it for if you have the app. So you can configure the app in Azure AD 
uh, generate a, a, you know, a certificate and bring, uh, bring that certificate over to the machine and use that for authentication. And on the other cases where you have, you know, a forms, how, why I'm using these classic words, uh, a cloud-based uh, or cloud identity uh, or cloud service account, uh, I can use that to actually log in into my uh, tenant. So let me just go and pick up my, um, my MVP talent here. I'll paste the link and the password. So now I can log in, uh, but remember if you want to read more, there, there are links on this, uh, um, on the links here that you can actually use to read more and, um, and understand how it works and you know how you can set up different types of authentications. When I click next, this is where I have to choose the kind of load that I want to put on my environment. Uh, you can either choose all talent, which means all the site collections, or you can use selected site collections, which means you will have to type them one by one. And if you have 20,000, 30,000 site collections, it will be really hard work to do, but you can type in either one of them at time. So if I have to pick one, I can either type, you know, you know, one of my tenants. So I'm adding only one, but you know, if you are, if uh, you know, the customers that I ran uh, these uh, and some of my colleagues ran, um, you know, the range from 20,000 site collections to 60 and 90,000 site collections, uh, them some really large customers. So these, uh, we actually uh, did um, some breakout. We ran, let's say, 10,000 site collections in a CSV, uh, and we ran them on multiple uh, servers uh, so that we don't, um, you know, we don't end up in, in extremely large files or, um, you know, extremely long running processes. Um, the the one tenant that I ran, uh, you know, uh, over a weekend, a couple of weeks ago, um, I ran it for 20,000 site collections. It took me 12 hours. Uh, the, the VM was in Azure, so the process was extremely fast. And then you can also, uh, in the next screen, configure the uh, the number of options. So the um, you can pick up either one of these options. So you can say, I want to use classic workflow usage. Um, or you can actually pick everything. You can say all of the above. So the checkboxes below are just for information. Uh, you can actually pick uh, the option from the top or either choose all. So it's all or none or all or one. Uh, so you can see that you cannot uncheck these checkboxes. So I'll, for now, I'll choose the SharePoint Classic Workflow and I click next. On the next screen, it will tell me how many uh, parallel threads I can use. Uh, again, this will impact the performance of your, your tenant and uh, on the machine, of course, but remember uh, not to run this during uh, daytime when users are actually connected. So a weekend would be a perfect thing to do and a VM in Azure will definitely help in the performance. Uh, you can also, uh, the important information is that if you don't uh, feel comfortable exposing your user information, you can turn off this option so that uh, the user, any kind of user information like email address or names do not go there and they will be changed by the, the the special characters um, and and again uh, you can also change the, the the format of the generated files the separator you can choose comma or you can choose semicolon and once you're ready you just click on start scan and the scanning will start and the process will be running uh, don't run this process on your windows 10 machine while you're using microsoft teams or um, you know you have 20 browsers open i have heard and i've seen that uh, some of the colleagues try to run it on their machines to collect information. It's crashing all the time. As soon as they start sharing, uh, the process breaks and we had some funny stories around them. So the process will continue. It will take some time. But if I go back to uh, my slide deck for now, so what will happen when it's finished? So if I just say from current slide and I go back, this is how it will look like. Um, again, the, the reason for showing you this picture uh, is to give you an idea of how it looked like, but that's my, my, not my intention. Let's actually go back and see the actual report. So I have a report here that I ran uh, for, the, for uh, a tenant which has 20,000 site collections. So I'm going to kick it off. So I double clicked already, um, and this is the report uh, that you can see on the screen. So if you if you have to look through it, uh, and that's, what, that's the exercise that we did for the customers, I intentionally removed the, the name of the customer from here just to make, make sure, but this uh, take it like an example. So if you're focusing only on 2010 workflow, I will actually come back here and click on the 2010. And you can see that um, 
I, I will definitely take a look at the first two uh, first two graphs uh, for now. So you can see that according to the uh, modernization scanner, there are around 400 workflows which can be migrated from uh, SharePoint 2010 to Microsoft Power Automate or Flow. There are 361 which are not. So that's the scary part for many of us. We might think, you know, how is that these workflows are not migrated? There are situations where either the workflow is built on top of um, um, a sandbox solution, um, you know, definitely, or it's using something that is uh, some action or condition that is not available in, in Power Automate. So it's scary, but maybe you can um, get over some of the things. Like I have seen that many workloads I've seen use the, uh, the you know, high permission, um, uh, the high permission action so that you can impersonate the user and perform an action on the SharePoint um, list item or a li on a document. So those, because you cannot impersonate in, in Power Automate, that the tool is simply telling you, hey, you know, you can't migrate it. But definitely you should still need to go and look at those workflows. As soon as I pick, click on W2010 workflow, and just to give you an idea of the workflows, uh, if I scroll down to the definition names, you can see some workflows are using weird conventions. Uh, as I said, these workflows can be deployed using any technology like sandbox solutions or custom solutions, and they are just workflow files that can be migrated by third-party migration tools. And, and the sites that I'm actually showing you are actually migrated from 2007, 2010, and 2013 environment. So that's why you can see the naming convention here. It's pretty clear that these are actual workflows being used. Um, so these are not fake, these are actual workflows. So you can pick up the name and then take further action on it. Uh, as soon as you pick up the, the workflow, it will show you what site that workflow belongs to, or you can actually go to the uh, site level, which is another slicer here, and pick up the, the, the site to see its workflow. So you can make that um, you know, slicer or filter much, much quicker. But, the, the, but quickly, if we, we have to look at the upgradability of the workflows, there are 567 uh, uh, workflows, which are kind of in, um, the tool is unable to figure out whether they can be upgradable. So it means that I have to actually go and review these workflows one by one to figure out why. Uh, this, that's a pain point, especially for these number of workflows. Um, but if I uh, go back and see, you know, the, the other options are pretty clear. I'll, I'll go to that. But you can also filter, you know, if you're not worried about site level workflow. You know, site level workflows were not that common in this customers. But if I click on it, you can see that it's actually have around five of them and uh, which are kind of will be upgraded and then remaining are not. But if I choose, if I clear the filter, the important thing that I need to see is that how many workflows have been modified recently? So if I just scroll down and I see the, the time frame, you can see that uh, in 2019, um, yeah, we have some serious workflow update activity. And ever since 2020, the number has gone down pretty, pretty um, well. It, you know, not many workflows are being modified um, in, in last two quarters. But if I change it back and say, you know, show me only uh, a both, 2010 and 2013, because I remember our focus is not to actually think about 2010, but also 2013, the number is now staggering. And now we can see that in the second quarter of 2020, we updated around 358 workflows. It means that these workflows are actively used in, in the talent. So it seemed like we need to go and um, look at that number. So you can see if I go to 2020, and I see uh, Q2, you can see now that the workflow up, 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 uh, upgradability has changed. And I can actually see that 358 workflows are enabled and are being updated. So it seems like these users are either have um, access to SharePoint Designer and they are making changes to their existing workflows. Um, before I actually close it, uh, this. Uh, when you open this Excel sheet after the tool is done, you will see that it's using a, a, a formula from a workflow uh, list, but you will not see this worksheet. 
uh, this worksheet is hidden. So all you need to do if you want to see this worksheet and see the columns and add your own logic to these, feel free to do that by simply pressing Alt F11. F11. Or sorry, uh, and then once you do, it will open the VBA designer. Let me drag it to the screen. Here is the VBA uh, screen. I'm not sure why it came so small. So on the left side, you can see that it has dashboard and then workflow, uh, workflow sheet. So basically, you just come here and change the visible from uh, Excel, Excel sheet, very invisible um, to, um, let me make it a little bigger, very, you know, from very in, not visible to visible. So as soon as you set it to visible, it will actually, uh, let me do that. Uh, hidden. All right, whatever, but you, if you choose change set to visible, it will actually come back. So I'm, I'm just wanted to show you quickly, may not be applicable to you. I don't know why it's behaving like this, but um, now this is the, the report and you can now uh, take it to see in on that. You can filter if I clear the filters and I want to see you show me only the list workflows and then you can scroll to the right and say, give me the workflows that are used by this, uh, let's say, and the sales site. I can actually see that there are, well, there's only one workflow here and then I can get the name of that workflow. If it's, I can grab it from here, uh, past control DMS. And actually now I know that this workflow is there and it's being, it's been modified back in quarter two of 2019. So it's saying like it's usual and it's enabled and it's working. So I can actually go and start talk to the owner of the site and see, you know, if I have to convert it. So that's the, the quick, I would say slow and quick introduction of the um, modernization scanner. Now let's jump into the uh, upgrade path. So it's kind of pretty simple, straightforward. You can upgrade the SharePoint 2010 workflows to 2013 workflow. Now um, there is a way I have recently, um, you know, face this situation that as soon as we start talking to the end users, read that we will be converting your workflows uh, to the Power Automate, there is always a pushback. And there is a reason for that. People are using these workflows, uh, I would say from 2013 timeframe, uh, not in terms of SharePoint, but in terms of the year, people are used to seeing the same UI. So the, the change from the task-based actions to an approval through email is not straightforward in many situations. People like to go to the SharePoint site. People like to see the email format in a certain way. And there's a link to the document that they click on it, it opens the document in front of them, they review it, and then they go back to the task and complete it. All that, they have been doing it for years and the change is always hard. So the pushback that we always got is that, you know, we can't go directly to SharePoint to Power Automate. So give us uh, like two versions of both the same a workflow, the 2010 workflow in the 2010 style, uh, in the 2013 style, sorry. Uh, and then also show us what will happen if we mi migrate over to Power Automate. Sometimes it's painful if the workflow is really large. I'm going to show you some examples of the workflows that I'm talking about. We definitely uh, pick up the yellow area and said, no, we are not, we can't do that. We have to pick either one, the first blue or the orange. So we did that. Um, for smaller workflows, which are mostly approval based, two or three levels deep, we actually ended up developing a 2013 style workflow. And then we also developed the, the Power Automate. And over the period of weeks, we saw that the number of uh, 2010, 2013 style workflows, the number slowly went down and eventually the user came back and said that people are now very comfortable of approving the items and taking actions by email rather than doing it through the task forms. So we went back and disabled that workflow. So again, uh, a good idea about that. Now, another situation that is very common in, in the IT, InfoPath forms. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, when I say InfoPath, it hurts because InfoPath is dead for years. And But the real story is that InfoPath is being used. So um, while I was showing you the, the report of the customer, I also collected the information of InfoPath forms. Uh, the, the InfoPath form report showed that there are 
2,500 infopod farms attached to these uh, sites. So it seemed like, can we just go back and tell them, hey, we'll be upgrading all of those infopod farms because the way things are, we'll, we want to use Power Automate for the workflows. So let's change the, the, the dialogue. We might not have enough time, enough resources to actually do both at the same time. So again, uh, to the contrary of everybody else talking, develop power apps, develop power apps. Uh, I would say that we have left the infopod farms as is in many situations. If the farm is deep, it has many complex scenarios. It uses, um, it calls some web services and it, and it actually have complicated formulas in there that learning and implementing will take us a very, very long time. We let the users continue to use power uh, the info platforms. One thing that we did actually, we reviewed those forms and made sure that we don't make, still keep them as a desktop only. In certain, in very limited scenarios, we left it as is, but um, we tried to migrate those desktop enabled info platforms to web browser based uh, forms so that we don't we we don't have the dependency of installing infopath designer or infopath desktop so that's a question mark i would leave it uh, to the power apps community to actually decide whether we can upgrade uh, the infopath forms completely uh, but i think at this stage it's hard to actually do both things at the same time if 2013 workflow if 2010 workflows is going in november 1st then definitely we don't have time to convert all of those info platforms into Power Apps. Now, quickly give you an example of before we jump into um, the some actual examples of the workflows. Here is a 2010, 2010 workflow. Uh, on the other hand, um, and you can see that uh, on the left, I've, you know, I have a picture, a problem in my picture. I uh, mistakenly selected the 2013 style approval but it's actually a 2010 workflow. So you can see that um, I called it 2013 approval. It's actually 2010 approval. So once you select the basic approval settings, um, you can actually add the people who are uh, assigned the task. But on the right side, I've shown the same step that can be done in the 2013 style workflow. So just like you have a task, uh, you, assign, you configure the task in 2010 style workflow, you also set up approval stage in 2013 style workflow. You assign a task to someone based on your logic, but it gives you more flexibility. Um, in the 2010 style workflow, you just have to type the name of the person. In the 2013 style, you can actually make uh, conditional logic. In some cases, you can do a lookup uh, based on the workflow type or setting in the workflow. So you can look up another list, which is you have defined, and then read that value. Say if the workflow type or the project stage is ABC, then ta sign task to Jerry, otherwise sign task to Tom. And based on the action done on the task, you can actually make a condition or action and then send email. I kept it very simple, very straightforward, uh, but some of the workflow that I've, I've updated recently had three or four stages of approval and in each stage i had to just make a duplicate copy of the first stage and change a few things around um you know so stage one assign tasks to people if anybody rejects uh go to stage three uh and then in stage three if somebody makes um an, a rejection then end the workflow otherwise finish uh, stage four so it's not that uh, hard to actually convert them uh, as a basic one but again if you have the workflow customized in SharePoint Designer, then I would say you open the, the workflow in Designer and then make the matching the CN. So with that, I'll show you the same action done in uh, Power Automate. So the Power Automate community might come and say, hey, you know, there is a out of the box approval flow template. Why didn't you use it? So the situation is that we, uh, the approval template is there. Yes, it, you can start it, you can assign the template, but not all workflows are based on the out of the box uh, approval uh, flow. So you might have different conditions. You might have different actions you want to do before or after. So I, I kept it for one screen. So I just showed you that you're assigning a task, showing some details, providing a link to the item. And then once user approves or rejects, you have a condition to actually uh, take the next step. So you can actually do the same thing in Power Automate uh, at, just like you did in 2013. 
here is another example. Now I'm going, coming into the actual work that I've been doing in last few months. So um, I'll, I'll just see if you can see the workflow, very small, around 10 page long workflow on the right. So this workflow was developed back in 2013 or 2014. If I click on it, uh, it will open as a picture. It might give you an idea how complicated the SharePoint workflow can be. So you can see here, this workflow uh, has this many conditions and actions, so many, uh, there are so many, so much it's doing, um, and, and then eventually completing. So the same workflow, um, it's one situation where the end user gave us hard time and told us that he can't, he does not want to convert this into a, a power automate based workflow because he doesn't want to change the way he's working. Uh, this is where we jumped into a problem. We uh, we just tried to do it and then eventually had to go back and convert it to a 2013 style workflow. But one thing that we did in this process, and this is something that I have it in the end of the slide, but I want to go through it. Once we reviewed this workflow, I'll go back for a second. You can see how many stages it has. So we talked to the uh, users and said, it's been six, eight years you have been using it. Is there any updates you think that you have to do? And we find out that they they came back and said, hey, you know, out of these eight or nine stages, we actually don't use these stages. So can you help us with that? Can you actually allow us to pick exactly what stage and, and you know, we want to run? Maybe we don't want to run stage three of 10. Maybe we just want to run stage one, stage four, and stage five. So what we did is that we created um, uh, three different levels of the same workflow. We break the workflow in three different levels. So we, uh, the, the workflow, we have a full review, which is doing all 10 of 10. And then we have a quality review, which is doing two out of 10. And then we have a master data review, which is doing four out of 10. So I, I can't just break it down. It has pretty nested steps in there, but it's, um, it's one way that you actually can break down your workflow or the, your flow into easy chunk or stages. So we definitely were able to uh, remove a couple of stages that nobody ever used and providing um, the UI to the users. So what we did, how we actually did that. So in the work, in the Power Automate, you can have the, just like in the SharePoint workflows, we have the, the uh, initiation form vari uh, variables or initiation form parameters. In, in Power Automate, we can also have inputs. So when we kick off the flow, we can actually ask the question, hey, what type of wor uh, workflow you want to run? And users have to pick full review, quality review, or master review. It made our uh, the workflow process pretty clean, and it doesn't we doesn't have to do lots of if conditions in our uh, flow. So we just manage it through the condition or the value of the of the column. Here is another example. So this is um, I don't have a large picture of that, uh, but this workflow is a daily notification workflow. So we have a system, the customer has a system, and the users go to that system, upload content, add content, but there is a concept of drafts. So what the customer want is that once the, uh, once the document is uploaded and left as a drop, we want to send a notification to that user saying, you left a draft, so go ahead and take an action. So, and, and then there was another thing that if somebody has sent um, an, a document or a task or approval and nobody's taking action, it also sends an email to the, um, to the approver saying, hey, you know, you have an item for approval. This was done using uh, the call to HTTP service using Microsoft Flow. So uh, using uh, SharePoint uh, call to HTTP web service um, action. But you can see that it's basically uh, doing all that logic here. It's picking up the values from JSON and then making that logic. Uh, but it was extremely painful. Uh, SharePoint 2010 workflow did not have the same concept of collections um, and string manipulation, just like we have in Power Automate. So the same complicated and very hard to modify and test flow was con uh, workflow was converted to Microsoft Flow. You can see here the same example of an actual workflow, uh, you can see the name of the application and it's doing, it's, it's based on a recurrence and we are just get collecting the data from that um, SharePoint site. And then once you have that, we actually are performing our um, very nice actions like parse JSON and compose. And in each step, I, I wish I can actually drill down to it, but in each step we actually go and collect the information. We have a certain condition 
and in the end we process and clear all the duplicates and send a very nice email to each user all done using that simplified view so it is definitely possible to convert those actions that looks complex into microsoft power automate workflows all right so now his, this is where um you know we need to make sure that uh, this is my uh, this is our uh, my personal experience in terms of developing for uh, you know doing these activities it's not simple it's not straightforward you can you know in, in some situations when we introduce that the concept of workflows being uh, the your 2010 workflow being deprecated or will being disabled the end users does not understand it so basically we have to explain it uh, clearly what will happen on this date um, and then show them the report um, what we did is that for for some um, high priority sites which had large number of workflows, we actually identified and sent notifications to their admins. Uh, we reviewed the report with them. Uh, we picked up some of the workflows which are heavily used, which are important for their business to actually finish. And, and then we, we had a meeting within our team to review all those workflows in details. You know, if you imagine the workflow is 10 or 20 pages long, uh, it takes time to actually document each step and if you know about lookups, how they work in SharePoint 2010, it's not an easy thing to actually go and say, you know, in the send email activity, there is a custom action uh, that's calling a lookup to a list based on the value of the SharePoint column uh, workflow name. So if you want to go deeper at that, and then you find out that the workflow is using uh, five or six lookup list um, and to actually build it. So, um, understanding will take time and then you have to make sure that you don't do the same mistakes that those previous developers did like you know making those lookups again and again and again and your workflow uh negatively impact the performance of your sharepoint site so you review those things and um, you know in the orange or yellow very very carefully at the same time it's time to actually train your end users um you know many uh, cu customers who are new to the tenants, uh, who are new to the SharePoint usage, um, uh, they find it easy because people are seeing it for the first time. The companies that are coming coming from the world of SharePoint on prem, like 2007, 2010, 2013, find it really hard for people to actually uh, move over to Power Automate. You know, hard, but it's true. Um, so this is the time to train the end users, show them how to call um, the Power Automate func uh, you know, directly from a SharePoint list. Go to the list, but make sure, uh, you know, make sure the list is in a modern uh, experience. Again, that's another challenge that we have faced that out of the 20,000 site collections, there are around 6,000 site collections which are forced to be classic. So this is where we have to, when you have to convert them, we have not only uh, this challenge of converting those workflows, but, you know, I have a SharePoint list, and the list has a very nice form on it. And we went to the list, we find out that the form was built using content editor web part. And you know very well, if you have a content editor web part, you, can, you cannot convert it, in, it into a modern page. What is the problem there? Well, how are you gonna solve it? That's where it's important to actually, uh, we have to review those requirements for complex workflows. You know, the, the form is as important as, as the workflow. Once you do that, the next step is to actually develop a proof of concept workflows. Uh, and I suggest based on my uh, testing, um, we don't develop the full workflow at once. We develop pieces of it. Uh, we review them with the end users to make sure that those pieces are done properly. And then we move on to the next level. One example that I gave is that make sure you are covered for lookups. Do not repeat the lookups. Make sure you read all the lookups on top, just like in the in the Power App example I showed you above here. You can see that we are doing all the lookups above. We are leading get email from contact list, uh, get value from business value assigned to. Uh, we are using checkout file. You know all, all these uh, things that we have to we need in the later part of the flow. We are getting it above so that we don't have to repeat the same thing again and again. Uh, again, uh, once you design, once you're done with your uh, flows, that's the next step. Make sure you sign the ownership. Um, you know, this is one of the common problems that when we define 
in some situations, end users develop their flows, but then the, the, the SharePoint support or Office 365 support team has to go and support them. And the end users think that we can access everything. By default, when you create a flow, it's only accessible to you, only you are the owners. So you make sure that you, you create your flow as a service account, or you make sure that when the end user creates his flow, you add that service account as an owner so that if the users move, you can actually go and access that flow and make changes to it. Um, the last thing that we have seen, and this is where um, it's important for us to explain to the end users, to actually show them how to do minor troubleshooting of their flows. If there is a, you know, they don't come back to you if they missed to provide a value in their flow, in their form and the flow starting to fail. Again, you can have logic to capture all, all that try catch and you can say, hey, you know, if something value happen, I can, if you notice that here uh, in this example, uh, we have this whole uh, workflow approval starts, but in the end we are checking here if the file is checked out. So this is the error statement. So if somebody started a, a flow, then the file was checked out, the flow will fail because we are making a change in the flow. So uh, in, in the item, and I'll show you in, in, in like a minute, but if the file is checked out, we just don't want the flow to run. We just tell the users, hey, the flow is complete, the file is checked out. We are sending an email saying the flow is checked out, please make sure you check in the item before you run the flow. Okay. Right. I'm just letting you know we have a few minutes left and yes. we have about eight questions. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let me just quickly get, jump over, uh, finish that concept. Very, very quickly, there's nothing new here. Um, so um, in terms of the concept, I, I, I think the, uh, I don't even have to read this because this is uh, already recently Microsoft has uh, provided a very nice uh, article providing the SharePoint 2010 workflow migration concepts. Just, you know, I think I can provide the link in the end if you can read that. Uh, but the most important thing that I want to mention uh, that uh, there are exactly same kind of actions in SharePoint workflow and in the same way there are actions in Power Automate. Like when the file is added or when the item is added, uh, when the file is added and updated. So you in SharePoint workflow, you have both actions as separate. Uh, in, in SharePoint and Power Automate, you can run it as one. Um, send action is an action in both SharePoint designer workflows and Power Automate. Uh, task approval is different in Power Automate than SharePoint workflow um, and stuff. So I, I've already covered some of it, but if I go to the next slide, which is I think the most important and fu fun slide. So I heard these things many times. I just wanted to go through them in like exactly two minutes. All right, so first thing, um, I want all of my actions to be traceable. So SharePoint workflow, we did it through custom list. Uh, we, in the, every stage of the workflow, yes, you can use workflow history list, no hard feeling, but the problem is it can grow large. There might be multiple, what are you gonna do? Um, so what you do is you, you, we use the, um, you know, custom list at every stage of the workflow, we add an item to a list for that specific workflow. And then we create a custom JS link uh, because it's all classic. Uh, and then user click on that link to see the history. For flow, you can do exactly the same thing or you don't have to do it because the flow does show you those values when you click on the flow history. The, the thing is that flow stays only for 30 days, just like SharePoint workflow, but that's for the instance. The workflow history will be there, but you'll not be able to reach it because the workflow instance has been removed. Uh, I want to see the status of the workflow, where exactly it is. The, SharePoint 20, uh, 10, 2013 workflows always show the name of the workflow as a, as a column, and you can click on in progress or complete and see it. In Power Automate, nothing happens, so how you do it? So use the, in the last session, you heard about the, uh, the concept of column formatting. So there is a very nice column formatting example called uh, see, check the flow or start a flow. So you can actually create a hyperlink that will go to the, that specific, uh, flow that was run on that item. And when you click on that, it will take you the to the flow history page. You can see exactly how the flow completed. I want to keep my list as classic. All right, that's hard. So in that case, if that user is not ready, you will still have to stay on 2013. There's no way you can go to Power Automate for that. Um, we are using content editor. Again, 
uh, keep your SharePoint workflows to 2013 for now because um, you might not be able to run it out manually if the requirement requires. Uh, can I run? Can I provide inputs before I run the flow? Yes, um, both in Power Automate and in um, in SharePoint workflow. Can I impersonate the action? Yes, for SharePoint workflow. No, for Power Automate. Not yet. I would say, I will I be able to manage update the flow directly? No for SharePoint designer, question mark. I would say not many companies give access to SharePoint designer. They hire people like us to develop the workflows because they're complicated, complex. So that's where power of Power Automate comes uh, when you got talked about citizen developers. Uh, can I call the third party APIs in SharePoint? Yes, you can call HTTP service, um, but you know what? Other things you can call. It depends on how, how you want to do it. But Power Up Automate provides us tons of custom actions or connectors that we can utilize. This is not a Power Automate introduction session, um, so I'm not going to do it. I put a picture of the values that I wanted to talk about, uh, show in this picture. You can see that in the SharePoint list, I have a start review uh, button. So when user click on it, it actually start that uh, flow. And you can see that on the right, it's a review status. So master data review in progress. The same example that I showed you is here as well. So with that, lots of talking. Um, <laughs> absolutely, I am, I'm, uh, you know, I hope in, I'm not uh, talking a lot. So go ahead and read the questions. OK, uh, well, I know you got to this early on. Any idea when 2013 will be retired for existing uh, Existing talent. So I heard um, again, it's not confirmed that it should be somewhere in 2021 in February um, or March. Uh, this is not confirmed. Don't do not, you know, uh, I, I, I I saw that and I, I, I saw that in an email. I saw it in the slide, but um, I think it's the same time frame, but it's not confirmed yet. OK, um, do you know if there is a way to see what workflows might exist? I recently started working at my job, so I am unsure how much they use workflows. Yeah, so the the, the simplest example is to actually run the migration, uh, the um, modernization scanner. Um, modernization, you know, if you, you can just run it, 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 you don't need any server. Just run it on your machine, provide your credentials. And then uh, if you are site collection admin and just run it and choose the workflow, classic workflows, it will give you the report just like I showed you. Um, if, for example, you, you, you are not allowed to run an executable on your machine, and I've seen it in many customers, you can't run an executable other than the knowns. So what you can do is you can run PowerShell. So you can use CSTOM to actually get the same report. Uh, you know, you can use the Microsoft workflows.dll in the CSTOM to actually get all the associations uh, that you have, but if you don't have a large number of, uh, uh, you know, I would say lists or libraries and you're smaller, you can actually get the instances of the workflow that are currently running as well. So you can get the item, each item has how many workflows running. If the workflow instance count is greater than zero, count it and then put it in uh, CSV. So yes, definitely you can run both modernization scanner or PowerShell script. OK, and do you know if that can be done with ShareGate as well? I don't know. Uh, I think ShareGate probably will add it. If they're listening, they probably, <laughs> probably should add it. I, I think the you know it's it's great thing to have. They do have their inventory in there. I definitely have done it, um, but I think they are more concerned about how much content you have, how many libraries. Uh, you know, they don't pay me anything, so I'm not going to say good <laughs> things. But you know, ShareGate is definitely will have something there. Um, any tool scripts available to find out when? Oh, that's the same question. Um, how can we let users start a flow from classic mode SharePoint sites? Um, uh, so the thing is that you can't. Uh, from the UI, you can because there's no option. Uh, I would say the because you can't go to the Power Automate option and and says kick off the uh, the, the the power item uh, power, the the flow, but the thing is that if your workflow, look at like this, if your flow is reading an item to be added, it has nothing to do with the classic or modern. So if your workflow is set to automate automatically run when an item is added or updated, it will run as is. But the only thing is manually running it using 
the straight straightforward classic experience i don't think it's possible but you can there might be a way of running through a link you know because remember each flow is started through a link so you can call the same force a link page in a dialogue and do it but i haven't done it uh, i think the when you're classic you're classic when you're modern it's there okay um, any way to change the email address that approval emails are sent from? Oh, good question. So um, at this moment, I let me just quickly through it, uh, look through it. So I'll, I have the action right in front of me. So if, if without, um, let me see if I can start an approval. Approval type, title, assign to details, email link, uh, requester. So at this moment, I don't see the option in the flow to send an email from. Now the requester add the email of the person generating the request. It will keep that information. I think it will go from um, the flow email, but it's not. There's no option available to send from like we have in the send email activity. So not yet. And then um, running. How do you handle? an approval process that runs for several months. I think the, the limit is there is a limit, hard limit, 30 days. I, I think 30 days or 69 days. I, I'm not sure, but there is a limit uh, that is for each approval. And once that limit is, uh, um, I don't remember the exact date, I'm sorry, but um, it once that limit is uh, done, you can't run the flow any longer. So mm -hmm. it's not an unlimited uh, flow. Your approval must complete within a specified number of time. Okay. And do you have any indication or any inclination that Microsoft may extend that November deadline? All right. Good. <laughs> Good question. So somebody uh, from the community went and had created the Microsoft feedback item, um, and it received like two thousand votes already. Um, you know the 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 power app community and power the flow community or uh, i would say power platform community might get disappointed when microsoft came back and said no all right we're giving you in three months but for um for now first of all but it is yeah okay um there is one question in here that's specific to a slide that you um had presented it was a blue path to 20 uh, with uh 2010 to 2013 and an orange path to 2013 to power automate. Is it sure. really required to take the first path and why? And can we, can't we simply build corresponding power automate? Oh, yes, definitely. I think I, I kind of, I could have another slide there, another arrow there. I would say that, um, you know, instead of 2010 to power automate, Definitely. Uh, I think I, I probably missed it. So I'm honest here that I could have said, yeah. you know, power the SharePoint 2010 to Power Automate. So yes, good catch. Awesome. Um, and um, one one last thing is, and this is the last question. Um, do you have that link to the user voice? Yes, I do. I definitely have it. Yep. Yeah, and if you could just share it, that would be fantastic. All right. Awesome. And that's it. Um, uh, stay tuned for the next session. Um, oh. Anything else that you want to um, you have to add? Uh, I think, you know, happy workflow development for the next three, four months. Um, <laughs> I'm putting my head down and actually uh, making sure that I understand each. Uh, one last thing I will say that I think this is the time to create a cheat sheet for you for each and every action that you have in SharePoint 2013 and 2010 workflow. Map it to the Microsoft Flow so that you can master it. You know exactly what to use. There's so many things in Flow. Uh, one example would be variables. So make sure you understand how variables work, how collections work. And once you master that, it will be a lot easy, a lot of fun time. Perfect, thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Stay tuned for our next session. All right, take care.